two fur, and as that Patty's nephew, Alfred Cerullo, an accomplished actor himself, was going to be available to interview Patty, so that's what we get. We get a nephew who is an actor and an aunt who is a great actress. Mr. Alfred Cerullo, please. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you tonight. And before we begin uh, this, uh, this very special evening of a conversation with my aunt, uh, Patty McCormick, um, there's been a really special gift, I'll call it, that has been produced for this evening and for her by Sarah Hendrickson. Sarah, are you? Sarah's right there. So everyone, just please take a moment and keep your eyes on the screen, and we'll be right back. You sound like Fenestea tap-tapping across the room. But I can read people's minds. I can... You don't believe me. Should I? Is it true that when blood has been washed off anything, a policeman can still find if it's there? If he sprinkles some powder in the place, will the place really turn blue? If you just sit there and don't do anything, then you're as guilty as Bruce. Wait. They admit it. They think that he killed her. Come on, Liz. You're drunk. Drunk? It's called depression. I haven't had a drink in years. I'm not really waiting for a date. I know. Listen to me, you arrogant horses patootie. You buy me out right now or we go to court and you open your books. Somehow I... I have this big, big feeling that you really don't want to do that. You're sure you'll be all right? Don't worry about me. when they see someone different from themselves. It's easy we overcome. All you need is a chance to meet them. Jessica Fletcher, detective. J.B. Fletcher, the noted author. Yeah, well, that's nice. Say, I, uh, I read one of your books. <laughs> it was very good. Thank you. Jeffrey, would you mind me? You're trying to solve a robbery here. Well, let's not talk about that now. Why don't you go outside and play? Oh, I don't want to. I've got to grow up. I have to take her place. You said so yourself. That's why I sit with the dresses. I've got to love them as much as she did. More than anything. They're all I have left. Cut. That was fine. Run it. I told you we didn't need another rehearsal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, join me in welcoming to the stage Miss Patty McCormick. Congratulations. I call her Auntie Patty, but I'll do my best not to bore you with that title all through this. Um, but you know, I know she's crying. Um, let me just say this. Uh, it's a great honor for me, but I know how important you and your work are to all of your fans. And uh, let me just begin. We'll, we'll take a little deep breath here because she's emotional. I can see it. But, not vodka, it's water, but, um, you know, we're going to start with this, um, I guess the best place to begin, just to kind of kick this off, is really to talk about 
what is really a very special movie, Cabiel. I have not seen this film since I was a kid. Um, really, it's very complicated. There's a lot going on, beautiful stories. Um, but I guess the, the most obvious question is because it's the story of really this journey of a child star. Um, and of course, you were a child star playing a child star. So maybe you could just talk to us a little bit about sort of comparing sort of, I'll say real to real, uh, two different spellings, but um, fact <laughs> to fiction. Tell us a little bit about what that was like to do this film, being a child actor yourself, and was there similarities in it? Was it completely different? Just share a little bit of your thoughts about that. I, this is one of the most fun jobs I had as a kid. I loved it, so it, all the people in it were great. Um, everybody behind the scenes, a lot of laughs, really nice. Anyway, um, but the appeal for me was that it was on what you saw, you know, her room and her house and all of that. That was, um, it was fun for me to pretend that was my life. <laughs> because in reality, you know, I, I lived in the valley, you know, in a nice little house. And, um, and my life was nothing like that. I was a working person, you know. Um, so I enjoyed very much the illusion that that could have been me. <laughs> so, um, although there's a lot of emotion in there too, that's real and um, great humor, good writing. Boy, they were good, Jack, you know, Jack uh, Sure and um, Jack Sure. Jack Sure. I, I confuse him with Shay, who was a director of, of the Ropers. Anyway, um, and Cy Bomber, they were great, a great team. And, uh, but the comparison was laughable to me a little bit because, um, you know, I had a, a normal life. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, the giant bear, you know, was great. You know, you walk in her room and there was giant bears and all kinds of dolls on shelves and, and, uh, is there any part of the, when you watch this back, and I don't know the last time you saw this film, it's probably a while ago. Oh, I haven't seen it in forever. Yeah. Are there any I just remember liking it. You remember that sort of memories that got triggered about either fun times or challenging ones, or, or yeah. just particular ones that kind of, yeah, you yeah. saw something and said, oh wow, I remember that. Yeah, well we had such fun on the boat. Yeah, and the day that we shot the boat thing, it, it was Malibu Pier, and uh, yeah, and although it said the sh the boat said Paradise Cove, but maybe it's uh, they're named that. I don't know. <laughs> um, but that was really a fun fun day, and I swear I looked sunburned. You know, when the <laughs> I'm sure it took a long time. Um, uh, that that's one nice memory from it. Did, did I tell you another one too when we... No, no just, just the boat. That was, that was the one the you remember. I yeah. remember, and I do remember back in about... Oh. Tell me, okay, okay, here. the best part, I always wanted to get rid of my braids. <laughs> I, this is the truth, from day one. Um, after I got old enough to realize they felt ridiculous, now, you know, any for my... And um, so, the fact that I, it wasn't real because it was a wig, but the fact that I got to experience them cutting them off, <laughs> it was thrilling. And, and uh, as you can see, I still keep up the short cut. The shorter so, version. Yeah. Once in a while I grow it long and then I think, no, I, I'm gonna take it off again. But that was so much fun. Well, you know, um, the, legs. the at this, at this point in your career, and I've done some homework, although of course I, I know you my whole life. Um, just for the reference, uh, Patty is my mom's youngest sister. Um, there are th three girls in the family. And I so. Uh, so I know a lot about her life and her work, but um, one of the things I never realized, although I always say math doesn't lie, is that at this point, in life, Patty, you have 
one of the longest careers in show business. Um, that is true, and it's document, well documented that there are yeah. probably a few dozen actors in the business that have a career equally. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Um, but you know, maybe just share for a moment sort of the beginnings. Of the, just how, how, how did you get to be Here? you, the, the, the actor? Oh, well, it, you know, to be the actor. Well, you know, I have to say that it, um, my work was uh, different things at, in different eras to me. And life came in many times, and still does, that makes it go down, and you know, and then, and then something happens and the work comes up and life gets reduced a little bit, personal life. Um, but I found that there's, people appreciate history of work now. Um, Whereas in my time when I was younger and going through different transitions of ages, going from baby to child actor to, you know, a teenager to woman to old person, you know, um, all those transitions I look back on now fondly um, and I realize how one thing, I always make a joke, that it's a wonderful career to have if you are independently wealthy, <laughs> which um, you can't count on it, so it shouldn't be attached to that specifically. But um, you never have to retire. You never have to quit. All you have to do is be willing to get old. <laughs> so. You have to be willing to change as you change. You know, change the roles, change what you look for, change what, try to learn from others. See, you know, have your heroes. I had Marsha Hunt, you know, who I, oh, yeah. right? Ooh. She's still good. She's she's still doing well, and she's going to turn 105. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful I, thing. As October 17th. Marsha, who was an honoree here as honor. well. That's uh, how I pre, met. Pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, who played uh, Patty's mom in a series well, Patty had, uh, oh. Peck's Bad Girl. And uh, they're still in touch, and yeah. you still get to visit Marsha, oh, yeah. which is really nice. But anyway, I, I think what I'd love to say specifically is that it's really, I really appreciate so much um, how I feel lucky. You know, I feel lucky that I was able to have all of this career. You know, it, it's not, it was not something I was really uh, pu pushing. I didn't really push to have the work, as you know. But I got it anyway. I got enough of it anyway <laughs> to, uh, and then to have the pleasure of, at this late date, I had the pleasure of going to New York last, uh, just about a year ago to start rehearsals for an off-Broadway show. I hadn't been in New York in a play for 60-something years. So, um, Bad Seed was the last one. And so I think it was more years than that. Yeah, yeah. 67 years or something. <laughs> yeah. um, so that happened. And then I came home and I got the, the joy of going to Canada to do a, a Christmas, uh, uh, Christmas movie. But then this was about food. I don't know if you saw it or not. But it was called Always Amore. And it was about a restaurant. On Hallmark. On Hallmark, sorry. Yeah. And uh, that happened. And then I, I got a, I, now I have a video game, you know, that I, <laughs> um, but it's for children and it's called um, Cookie Run. Cookie Run Kingdom. Kingdom. That's what it's called. I fill in the blanks. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> And I play dark entrench enchantress cookie, and it's all—it's about cookies. I swear to God. And uh, so, I mean, I feel like I—you know—there, there's no stopping me. Yeah. You know, I just. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think you you raised an interesting um, point, and this goes to the journey of 
of being in the business and I, I suppose really at the root of being able to accept a, a legacy award um, from Cinecon, but that you know you have you have worked in all of the different Medes. media yeah. uh, yeah. mediums media yeah. um, that true. that exists. You started radio. you know in radio yeah. and and live television Crazy. and television and film of course and now with sort of animation and that's not oh. not everybody gets in stage of course and so. You know, how, does, how do you think, like, there are things you're doing that didn't exist oh, when you started? So. It's so fun, you know, it's just, uh, and it's, you know, the stuff on the web, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, and just a question, because I think it's important to note this, and I, I um, the, you know, obviously so many people in the audience, and we watched Kathy O tonight, which is a rarely seen film, which is just really? an awesome, an awesome yeah, choice. It really was. But obviously, so many people remember you from *The Bad Seed*, um, which you created that role um, Broadway when you were eight. Um, did the film when you were ten. Um, but you know that's had several different lives o over time. Tomorrow. And um, so, why don't you, you know, share that this little like newest chapter, oh, yeah. which is well, sort of very respectful of you in, in inclusion. In terms of yeah, the that project. was uh, Rob Lowe uh, uh, in 2018, I think mm -hmm. it was. He um, decided he wanted to do the bad, some, a version of the bad seed. So he he rewrote it totally, and his character uh, as the father was the lead. There wasn't the mother was not in it. And um, anyway, long story short, he said, "Would I want to play the uh, psychiatrist?" Oh. <laughs> To um, uh, into um, Grace McKenna, a little girl who's playing Rhoda, um, but not Rhoda. Um, and so I thought that was a lot of fun, and that I got to do a cameo in in Rob Lowe's. And then they now it turns out Grace McKenna and her dad wrote a script as a sequel, which Lifetime is doing, and it's on uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night. I think. It's going to follow the Rob Lowe one, and I, I was happy to do another little sequel <laughs> thing, um, a cameo playing the, the shrink again. So uh, it's teeny tiny, so you have to <laughs> you have to watch. Well, I don't think that anybody could attempt to do okay. any version of the Bad Seed without yeah. wanting you to be a part of it in some way. So I'm, 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 yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it, and, and I would say because this is a sort of a lot about family. This Kathy O is a beautiful story, really I about know. love and family, but yeah. I know my, my aunt would be very upset with me if I didn't just say that um, Patty's uh, two children and Danielle and Bobby and their spouses, Jason and Angie, and three of her four grandsons, four. Um, <laughs> Nico, Drew, and Cooper are all here Woo! tonight cheering on <laughs> Grandma. <laughs> have really been uh, amazing supporters of her in her life. How does oh, it feel yeah. to have your kids and not <laughs> your kids and then your grandchildren watching ah, it's amazing. you? And you know, in the, when I, the era that I lived in, um, you didn't make a big deal. I, I didn't uh, about work at home because you didn't know what the results would be, how the kids would feel about that really, how it would affect their own freedom to develop and all of that. So a lot of us made cho a lot of us in my time made choices not to bring it home too much. And uh, so slowly though, slowly as you get older and older, more of it's coming in. And I think they like it <laughs> because they are all their own people, and um, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. It, it doesn't affect it negatively or positively. It's just nice to share. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I'm just thinking of one thing because obviously Cinecon and, and the unbelievable sponsors of this event, including Hollywood Heritage, um, you know, really pay incredible respect to film and the history of film. 
Um, you know, some of the work that you have done in your career was on Kinescope. I know, um, I know. And I, I'm sure that because of the film fans here and, and they understand that, that um, the technology of that, but few people know that you, know, you were the original Helen Keller in the first production yeah. of The Miracle Worker, which was on Playhouse, on Playhouse 90. 90. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, I don't know. Uh, also a rarely seen um, production because of the yeah. kinescope. Yeah. You want to share some sort of memories of, of that experience? Of, of Playhouse 90? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I, I just uh, always I tell the story, but I always loved um, a couple of things about that job. Um, one was, well, Playhouse 90 was wonderful anyway, because you rehearsed for three weeks first. Uh, doing, you know, and then did it live. And um, the music was piped into the studio before the, sh you know, live, because it was live going out there, um, which explains the kinescope. Um, but what I'm trying to say, <laughs> what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I always wanted to have my dark hair. <laughs> And so I got the opportunity because um, she she had brown hair, and so the, so thrilled. I was maybe eleven. I think I was about eleven. So I was so thrilled to have my hair dyed dark because it was you know not naturally that blonde anymore. Um, I started out a blonde, but I didn't. Anyway, got to have dark hair, and then the best part was that I had no dialogue because I was Helen Keller. And I just had such freedom and such joy in the rehearsal process, because I wasn't, there was no pressure. <laughs> and um, I discovered that, that it wasn't so easy in the end, because it's like doing silent films. You think, I mean, you have to be awake <coughs> for every single <coughs> moment, especially if you don't have you know, a line coming up, you know, or whatever. Anyway, so uh, that's just a memory. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's a, a, I, I've gotten to see pieces of that it's over the years. It's kid memories. It's kid, kid stuff, not really actor stuff. So in, 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 <laughs> your, in your career in film, when you think about obviously starting as a child, and then as you got older and did different films in different chapters of your life, as you mentioned earlier, the child, the teenager, the yeah. young woman, the woman. Um, how do you think about that? I, I know there was a, a, a moment from Frost Nixon um, in there with Frank Langella yeah. and uh, U.S. Pat Nixon in Ron Howard's yeah. production. <laughs> to share a little bit about, about that experience. Oh, well, I was thrilled to you know see Kevin Bacon outside in the in the trailers, you know, playing his guitar in between scenes. Um, Frank Langella and I really didn't communicate. I, I had, um, because he, st he was one of those actors who stayed in character. Um, and <laughs> and um, so I know that when I heard Kevin Bacon refer to him and uh, talk to him and address him as Mr. President, I, I I just, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Pat Nixon, so I, I kind of backed off. You know? and, um, and also, he's very tall, so he didn't, you know, and I'm very little. So uh, I don't think he even spotted me, you know, backing over there. <laughs> and I know there, I saw, there were several clips from some of the sort of, uh, I guess, American international films. There were a couple oh, in, in there. I saw. I, love that. I think the the uh, mini skirt mob. I saw. A, a Was the mini skirt? Oh, and um, yeah. Oh, the, oh gosh, I'm the, the Mary titles. Jane, um, I saw a couple, but what were those Mary like? Mary Jane was and Kevin Coughlin was in that. Yeah. So what what, what was that experience like? like? They were all those indie movies. Yeah. It was when I time. okay. This was um, I went back to New York and I was there for a while and then. Uh, uh, I finally decided I was going to come out here on my own, and um, and that's when I got into I would do anything. You know what I mean? I'll I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so they did those a lot of those films like in a week in Arizona, 
and it was Maury Dexter, I remember, um, who did a lot of them. And it was a lot of fun, and that's when their father and I, you know, were dating, and we were married, and all of that. So that it's a very uh, sweet time. But I, got, I just got such a kick to see Kevin Coughlin's uh, up there, you know? Yeah. He, he was on I Remember Mama. We were children on it together. And then, yeah, and then uh, he, he was hit by a car. He died um, young. Yeah, well, I'm sure you, in your career, you've, you know, you've had friends and met many people um, over the years that, yeah, who aren't here yeah. now. Yeah. But I, I think the one thing, I, I think probably all of us have, as fans of film embrace too is that there's a chapter of everyone's life that's in film that is memorialized yeah. forever. And exactly. I think that's an amazing part of why it's so important to keep fighting and funding and supporting film. And sharing the older, you know, a lot of kids don't know, you know, as it's always true, who's, you know, who was Bob Hope? Yes. You know, they think it's an airport, you know? That's <laughs> and so, <laughs> and it's, imp it's important, like, it's nice to keep all of that knowledge going. And it's easier now with the, with uh, the internet and stuff, you know, because, People can share ideas and different, you know, you know what I'm saying. I do, I do. Tired. <laughs> it's so hot, isn't it? <laughs> it's like, it is, it's but debilitating. It, yeah. As they say, you know, t timing is everything. Yeah. I see uh, <laughs> right off uh, off the stage, Richard, you're, you're oh, there, and I... It's time. It, it's, it's almost time. We talk uh, ourselves to death, you know. But I, yes, um, that is, if you haven't caught on to that, that's very true. But I, I right now, I, I have the, uh, the opportunity to, to make the very special presentation that I originally was asked to do. I'm going to take it out. And I have to say, this is... is there's no question, this is one of the greatest honors I've ever been given. You gotten to see a little bit of, of Patty, um, the grandma and the mom, the sister, the aunt, the daughter, the friend. Um, and when you see her work, whether it's when she was a child or when she's a, not so much a child, but still a beautiful woman, um, <laughs> She's just an incredible artist and brings all of those pieces of her to her work. And so I, uh, I am honored to present her on behalf of Cinecon, um, the uh, Cinecon Legacy Award. And so please join me in congratulating my Auntie Patty. Patty. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. I'm so honored to have this, and thank you so much to all of you guys. <laughs> thank you so very much. <laughs> uh, and he started it all. I know. <laughs> and thank you for being such a good audience and, and for supporting Cinecon. We know how important that is. And, and Happy Labor Day to everyone. This is for all the workers in the world that make all of that happen. So have a wonderful night.